take that out. The thing that uh, is a problem of mine when I am working, I just kind of vomit all over the place with my tools and what I'm doing. And I just, I get so focused on the task at hand that I don't think about uh, the whole process. And sometimes uh, when I'm done with the project, it looks pretty messy. So I wanted to talk about painting your climbing walls. There's been a lot of questions about that. And I also want to talk a, a little bit about the lean to climbing wall uh, system that I designed. I'll give you guys some updates about that. I'm going to go up to my computer now and watch this. There's sometimes that I have problems with it when it goes live. And uh, I'm recording this on my phone. The front camera is horrible, so I have it turned around. Let's see. Tony, you want to come slide through here? Yes. Gonna join, join in here. There we go. And now I've got to mute it. Sorry, guys. Give me one second, and I'll I'll join you here. All right. So, hey, Connor, can you grab me one of those paint cans? When we painted the climbing wall last time, uh, we used a different type of paint, and I haven't really put it to its test. I've just put it onto the wall, and it's cured for a few days now. Yep. And so far, it's really been working good. Hopefully, it tests good, and it's this stuff right here. So pre-catalyzed water base epoxy the industrial pro from Sherwin Williams. And so far it's looking pretty nice. There is one thing about it is that it is very runny. It is more runny than other paints that I've used in the past. So because of that, I'm more worried about it getting into the tea nuts. Now I've had a lot of questions about what's the process. Do I drill holes, tea nut, paint, hang, hang the panels? What do I do? And I'll share with you what I do, and you can make your own decisions on that. Uh, also, if you have questions, go ahead and ask those near the end. I'll also, I'll try to keep track on my computer screen here on what those questions are. So what I do is I will first, I will drill all of my panels, and then I will cut them to the angles that they need to be if they need to be cut and then I will T-nut them, and then I will hang them, and then I paint. So, and the paint process goes paint, texture, paint, paint. And a lot of people say, make sure, you know, put the T-nuts in last because you don't want to get the paint in the T-nuts, and that is very true. You do not want to get the paint in the T-nuts. In the past, I have never had an issue with getting paint in the T-nuts when I roller it on. Make sure that you don't slop it on with your roller. That's the first thing to do. And then as you're rolling, the T-nuts that we usually use for climbing walls have a 5 8 inch barrel, meaning that they are an eighth of an inch back from the surface of the climbing wall. If you get a little bit of paint in those holes, it usually doesn't get into the T-nut. In fact, I've never had it get actually into the T-nut threads before. So just don't fuss with it. Let it dry, and then you're going to come back with a knife and just carve it out. It's super simple. It's really easy to do. This stuff being super runny, it, it, it I may have some bigger issues. If I have some bigger issues, what I'll do is I will first try to run a bolt through that T-nut coming through from the back side if there's th if it gets into the threads and I'll try to push that paint out might use a tap to try to cut it out uh, I've never been in that situation before so I'm not sure exactly what I will do or what will work best but those are the steps that I use um, just post your live feed 
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm actually I'm working on another video right now about wooden holds and how to attach those, some different ways that you can attach those to the wall. But um, there was a lot of questions about paint. With outside walls, I would, if I were to build an outside wall, I have had outside walls in the past that I did not paint both the front and the back. And they lasted about a year before you know, I took them down and did something else with them. They may last a little bit longer. With the weathering, it is hard on wood if it's not sealed up somehow. So I would recommend painting both the front and the back side. And if you are painting the back side, you obviously want to install the T-nuts after you paint that back side because you will get paint in the threads at that point. Uh, what are some questions that you guys have about painting your climbing walls? Let's see if we can get some questions. Connor, do you have any questions? Nope. My, my son is here with me. My oldest son is here with me. Um, he decided to stay. So, okay. Um, is it better to use paint that is already textured or to DIY paint and sand? Good question. Thank you for asking that. When we very first painted the climbing gym, we added the sand to the paint. It was a sand mixture to the paint. Uh, sanded grout works good if you're going that route. It didn't seem to work that well though. Uh, I find it is much better texture if you throw the paint on and then blast your sand into the paint. So I hope that answers your question. I, I think it's better to lay on the paint without the texture, add that texture while it's still wet, and then you'll cover it up after that kind of dries. Okay, uh, next question. Do you expect streaking from shoes on the last wall? Yes, um, on this paint job, probably. Uh, there's not, it's, even though, there are companies out there that say that it's mark proof their their texture or their covering or their finish is mark proof i've just i've never seen that this is pretty tough stuff so i expect it will not be as bad as our last wall our last covering was which was uh i went with this with a clear coat on our last wall it was, I wouldn't recommend it, and I was never planning on using it. It's just that's all I could find. It's called Quick. Uh, I think Quick Crete was not good stuff. I expect this to be better. What sand do you use? I I use play sand and and sift it out. So I screen it several times to get all of the big grains out. It is very rough, though. So. Also, when you're laying on the sand, put it on liberally. Like, don't, if you just put on a little bit of sand, those grains are going to stick out more and it's actually going to feel a lot more coarse, like you're on a cheese grater, than if you really put the sand on heavy. So, yeah, just play sand. It's a good question. Thank you. Um, can you think of any other questions that people, uh, might want to know when they're watching this on a playback. Let's see. No, the son says no. He's he's got this down. He knows how to paint these walls. So uh, something else that's cool about this. This is a semi gloss. When I first started painting, uh, I thought you want to use a low the lowest gloss that you can because gloss is slick. But when you add that that texture, that rough surface, that's what's going to give you that. And then this, this so the sand will give you the texture. And then the gloss is actually going to help it clean off better. Why did you decide to repaint? Um, I did not mention that. I decided to repaint to show faith that we are going to open back up. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to open back up right now uh there is hesitation of whether i i'm not fairly confident that we'll be able to recover i really hope so i have hope that we'll be able to recover um the paint 
we've wanted to repaint for a while because the, when we originally put on the, the clear coat in the very beginning, it was the wrong clear coat and it got really dirty, really messy. With the skid marks, that's also why I'm going with a darker color now. I originally did not want to go with a dark color because it makes the space feel dark, but we're going to go with a dark color on the walls and then combat that with adding a little bit more LED lights. Uh, I am building an indoor wall based on your plans. Thank you. Uh, what are your reasons to paint? Paint it or not? Yes. So there's there's a couple of things, a couple of reasons to paint. Uh, if it's indoor, you can totally just keep it raw wood. And I've kept my own home walls, many of my own home walls, just raw wood. And I do like that raw wood. There is a texture to that and you can smear on that raw wood. Uh, I am painting now because I, it looks more commercial and I wanted to get good at that. So I started painting my home walls for that reason. And it does have, once you get the texture down right, it does climb a little bit more like real rock, even though it's not but you can, you can smear a lot more like it is rock that you're climbing on. Uh, I have used chalkboard paint before on a wall. I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, you can make your own chalkboard paint too by adding the sanded grout mixture to it. Um, I don't, it's not a bad idea. When I've done, I did it for my kid's wall and I thought it was just this great idea where I'd be able to like draw my routes on it. So you could even draw lines connecting the holds together and the chalk just, in my experience, the chalk just rubbed right off. And it's because partially because it's my kids that are climbing on it. So for adults, I think it might be better. Okay. Next question here. I uh, hope you get, I hope that I can reopen as well. Uh, so Harry Norton asked, oh, um, how long do you expect the paint coating to last? I expect this in the commercial space. I expect it to last several years. Um, do you plan on repainting on a regular basis? Uh, I hope not because it does, you have to close, you have to, at a minimum, you need to be closed for a week. Um, this paint has a cure time of seven days. Most paint does have a cure time of seven days. So once you paint, you need to wait seven days before you throw any holds back on the wall. Um, and how do I decide what pattern to paint? Uh, I wing it. I just start throwing tape on the wall and say that looks good. So, and hopefully it works out. I think so far I've been pretty lucky with that. I always, I do say like, you need to have a plan. Greatness comes from, comes with the plan, but I just, I have the plan stuck in my head and the vision, and then I start applying it onto the wall. Um, what about the garage floor sealant? I do like the garage floor sealant. That's what I was originally going to do with our repaint was the, the clear coat garage floor. Uh, but when my friend uh, gave me a really good deal on this stuff, uh, to demo it, I'm basically demoing this paint for Sherman or Sherwin Williams. I'm not making any money off of it, um, but I got a really good deal on it, and we'll see. We'll see how it works. So, I do know that the garage floor paint works really well, though. So you can paint, use disc, use just whatever paint you want for the underlayment. And if it's water-based, the clear coat that goes on top of it needs to be water-based as well. And usually the garage floor paints, the, the epoxy paints that I've seen, they are have a water base. You can see that when with the cleanup. So look at the cleanup. If it says that you need to use water for the cleanup, then you're good to go, you're good to put that over water-based paints. How many gallons did I use? I used five gallons in that space. And I only did half of our gym. Um, it is a fairly thin paint too. So I, I put a couple of coats on. Um, let's see. 
can I use handheld drills to drill holes in my wall? That's all I've used is a handheld drill. Uh, I would not recommend using a battery powered drill because you're, there's a lot. You're gonna be drilling a lot of holes. Also, I would not use a paddle bit for drilling your T-nut holes because it's just a little bit more rough on the drill and your hands. So get a, get a good bit for that. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and end it there. I hope that this has been informative for you. Now, let me talk a little bit about the build plans that I have at climberdad.com. Uh, a friend from Send Stories, you can check him out. I'll actually throw a link to his channel down in the description after this has ended, so you can go check out his channel. He does some really cool stuff with graphics, and he's a climber. He volunteered to go through and kind of clean up the build plans a little bit, and it looks awesome. I'm going to be updating those in the next couple of days, so it's just a little bit nicer layout. It looks really cool. Those will be up on the website climberdad.com and I'll put a note on there that these are the new uh, build plans that were cleaned up by send stories um, and I hope that you guys are are out there having a lot of fun crushing it I will see you next time right here on climber dad Just in case you didn't see the paint before.